So a lot goes into consideration when setting up your own media server, whether you're setting up a Plex, Envy, Jellyfin, or just adding your media for your local network. You wanna take a couple things into consideration. So I've done a lot of videos on this and the top question by far is which device should I purchase or use to run my media server? So this video, I'm gonna go over my top five recommended devices. I'm also gonna go over the pros and cons. And in the end, I'll let you guys know what I'm using, how it's working, and what the capabilities are. Let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so before we jump into it, guys, just know that uh, what I think of a media server, whether it's Plex or NB, it's there to serve the media when I request it. So having said that, I do not turn off my media server. So power consumption is a, a factor that you have to consider. You wanna get a device that's not too power hungry. You wanna get a device that's pretty quiet, a device at certain size, and it's not a one size fits all, but it depends how you're gonna use it, where you're gonna have it, how many people are gonna connect to it. Media servers, uh, whether it's Plex or MB is gonna be pretty CPU intensive. Uh, transcoding does take a lot of processing power, but you might wanna stay away from those high power CPUs. That's gonna be very power hungry. The RAM doesn't really come in a factor as much. Of course, each setup is gonna require drive, so it's gonna depend on how much media you have in your library. Graphics card can help out transcoding. Anything additional is just gonna be for your preference, but CPU is very important. Of course, storage is gonna be important. So not gonna talk too much longer. Drop additional questions in the, in the comments section below, but I'm gonna start with number five all the way down to number one and i'm going to name the pros and cons so let's go ahead and start with number five so number five is going to be raspberry pi so reason i put this on the list is because i actually did a setup on this and it worked to a certain extent so as far as the advantages to to setting up your plex media server on a raspberry pi Raspberry Pis are 30 to $60. Yes, you're gonna have to buy drives to, to attach to it. You might have to buy a case for it. But once you get it set up, guys, if you have a light load, it will work and it will work pretty well. As far as the disadvantages, installing Plex on a Raspberry Pi takes a lot of know-how, guys. You have to get in the command line. You have to mount the hard drives. You have to set the hard drives to automatically reconnect on restart. You also have to do an installation of the operating system. And one of the biggest disadvantages is that if you're streaming 4K on this, it's not going to work. Even the newer Raspberry Pis, uh, it's not built to, to really take that kind of load. So you won't be able to stream 4K. It will stream 1080p or 720p fine, but it does have limitations so in my opinion if you're a hobbyist if you just want to tinker definitely worth checking out it's doable but not worth it in my opinion number four is going to be an old laptop or old desktop computer so for plex media server unless you're doing something extravagant i wouldn't recommend going out and purchasing the, the newest high power device newest pc alienware computer if you have a laptop an older laptop four or five years old or older desktop it will run your plex and it will perform pretty well as far as the advantages most modern laptops desktops it's going to have the the processing power needed to, to transcode your videos uh, you're going to have decent amount of ram it's going to be inexpensive because you already own it and it's going to be pretty easy to set up uh, setting up your plex on windows computer is the easiest method in my opinion as far as the disadvantages i can see where uh, a desktop computer is going to be pretty power hungry just a lot of moving parts you have a couple fans going if you have a, a cpu cooler that's also a fan that's something to take into consideration if you have led lights that's that's another power thing but the laptop is going to be a little bit better it is going to use less power it is is going to be available for you you set the screen to turn off and that'll work just fine so that'll be my 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 preference if you had a laptop you already own it you're not using it like you used to that would be a great plex media server so number three is going to be a mini pc so depending on which mini pc you get they have some that's extremely powerful some of the nuke devices are pretty powerful they have some that's not as powerful but less expensive so like i said you have to find that balance so advantages of using a mini pc inexpensive uh, you will need drives, obviously. The power consumption is going to be pretty low. Uh, a lot of these mini PCs will be uh, air-cooled. They will dissipate through heat sinks, so they won't have a fan that's turning. That's going to suck up a lot of power. Also, they're pretty quiet. With that being said, no moving parts. You just turn it on, it runs, and it runs without you even knowing. As far as the disadvantages, you are going to be restricted mostly to uh, plug it in hard drives or dongles, or if you have a, a storage location on your network. So that might be a bottleneck uh, if you don't have the right equipment. And also what I've noticed from the, the couple mini PCs that I, I've 
tested this on it doesn't stream 4k processing power is just not there ram is usually pretty good but 4k is going to be hit or miss depending which device you get so number two is going to be nvidia shield tv so the nvidia shield tv is a streaming device at heart it is a gaming device as well and it makes a great plex media server so as far as the advantages very quiet it's pretty inexpensive when it comes to your media servers uh it is around two hundred dollars or so but uh, for that you're getting a great streaming device you're getting a great gaming device and you're getting a plex media server as well it also has low power consumption uh, it's quiet and the setup is pretty straightforward in addition to that nvidia shield will stream 4k uh, because it does have a decent processor and graphics card as far as the disadvantages that i've seen uh, using the nvidia shield as a plex media server i do find that sometimes it goes offline and it takes for you to go in there and reboot it just to get it going again besides that uh, the the obvious is that you are going to have to either adapt storage or hook up dongles i'm not a fan of plugging usb drives into your media server especially if you stream streaming larger files 4k files that might be a bottleneck that could kind of diminish your streaming experience so number one is going to be a nas or network attached storage now from all the devices that i've tested over the years uh, this kind of gives you the best of both worlds they're relatively quiet and that highly depends on the type of drive you're using they're efficient streams 4k reliable has a lot more functions besides just being a plex media server um, they can be your vpn server you can use it to, to to do your security cameras you can of course use it as your file server for your house and i've set up plex on synology as well as qnap and i haven't had any issues with these devices now as far as the disadvantages of a network attached storage the first one is they're going to be pretty expensive guys you're going to run about 400 to 500 even more depending on which one you pick out and then you still have to go back and buy the hard drives for it so keep in mind that the money is going to be a thing the other con is that it takes some know-how getting everything up and running so having said that numbers one through five i've done uh, uh full installations on so definitely check those out i'll leave the link in the description as far as the device that i'm actually using now as my primary plex server i set this up about two years ago and very little maintenance and still running well i'm able to stream 4k i have over 12 terabytes in there and i love the fact that everything is just built into one as far as the specs uh, this is a five uh, bay nas with aes encryption four gigs of ddr3 l ram expandable up to eight gigs but i, I just have the the four gigs installed they do have two built-in m.2 ssd slots and this is for for caching dual gigabit lan for for failover or link aggregation and it does support 4k place 4k multiple devices multiple streams with no issues now the processor is the intel j55 quad core processor and this will give you speeds from 1.5 and burst up to 2.3 gigahertz so nothing too over the top for the processor it works for what it needs to do it doesn't have to be an i9 i7 or whatever the latest processor is but something simple as this at 2.3 gigahertz is all the power i need with that being said i'll link the products as well as the the tutorials in the description if you have any questions drop it in the comments let me know what you guys think of my list and let me know if i missed anything don't forget to smash the like button subscribe if you haven't done so already thank you for watching and i'll catch you on the next one